hello everyone and welcome back to my channel once again my name is Rahmat and it's always a pleasure coming your way today again I want us to talk about the Chinese situation the situation of China and Africans China if you ask our political leaders they will say that our relationship with China is a great one and that the Chinese government is our friend and then we have a very cordial relationship with them but those people are backstabbers. They have no interest in the Africans. They have no interest in the personality of the Africans. They just want the African resources and not the African person. That in recent times, there have been so many assaults, so many assaults by uh, Chinese nationals meted out to our African brothers and sisters even as much as doing it in our own African soil. They do it in our land. And people just stand by and watch. This is so sad. In my own country, I cannot defend myself. If I cannot fight for my own self in my own country, if I cannot determine what should happen and what should not happen in my own country, how am I able to do that in another person's country? That is why China is doing what they are doing to us now. That is why China is kicking our brothers and sisters out of their own homes in China. That is why China is banning our brothers and sisters from accessing their public places such as restaurants, shopping malls, public transports. Why are we doing this to ourselves? I just got information about a Chinese captain, a captain of a Chinese ship who threw out two Africans from Tanzania who were stowaways that they discovered in the middle of the Indian Ocean and then out of fear that those Africans may be carriers of the COVID-19 disease, they threw them out into the ocean where there are sharks. They said they gave them two life jackets and two bottles of water and they threw them into the oceans, right into the oceans where the, an area where there are sharks, life fisting sharks. It's only by the grace of God that they were able to be swept by the shores and discovered by people who took them to the hospital. What the hell is this? What is this? Is there any humanity in the Chinese person? Is there any humanity in them? Not long ago, I heard that from South Africa, a Chinese employer uh, locked up his 14 employees in his company. He locked them up in the factory and forced them to work overtime to produce face masks to meet the demand, the growing demand of face masks in the, in the country. Why would you do this? This person lives in his country. He is a South African. You are a, a, you are a foreigner in South Africa. And you employed them to work for you simply because there are no jobs, simply because our African leaders are useless and they cannot provide for their nationals. They have come to employ them and use them the way they like. They use them even against their will. My goodness, this is worrying. This is worrying. So what if... I am employed by a Chinese person in a Chinese country. What else do you expect them? How else do you expect them to treat us? If they can get away with treating us like this in our own country. And the painful aspect of this is that when the, these crimes are discovered and brought to the, the eye of the public, the law seems to be working. It takes them on and they just let them go in the middle of it with a fine. They just spank them and let them go with just a tiny bit of fine. These two uh, Chinese captains that I learned have thrown the Tanzanians into the water, into the oceans for the sharks to feast on, have confessed to the court. They have confessed that yes, indeed, they threw them out and they were uh, accused of attempted murder. And you know what the punishment was? 
they let them go with a fine of $5,000 for the captain and $2,500 for the other person. And that is it. And that is the end of it. What if they had died? What if God had not intervened and they had died? That is just it. And that is what keeps happening. 2500 for the other person and 5000 for the captain himself. This is even better. Sometime back here in my homeland, Ghana, a Chinese couple, a man and a woman, hired a girl to become their housemaid. This maid was living with them and then according to the maid, they were not treating her well. They weren't paying her well. They were not treating her well. They were maltreating her. Right in Accra, her parents live in Accra and then she doesn't have the chance to go and see her parents. She's not allowed to go and see her family. She's not allowed to go and see any friend. She's not even allowed to step out of the house. And she isn't being catered for well. She's not being paid well. And she has attempted on several occasions to leave the house. And whenever she attempts to leave the house, this is what they do. That they have very giant dogs in the house, guarding the gate. And the dogs only speak Chinese. They speak to the dogs and the dogs can understand them. So whenever they are leaving the house, they let the dogs loose to guard the gate of the house. So that the girl cannot be able to attempt in leaving the house. There was this time they left her. She couldn't take it anymore and she attempted leaving the house. My goodness. She was feasted on by those dogs. The dogs tore her apart. They ripped her skin. Until she finally was able to get out of the house. And to seek medical attention. It took the police of Ghana so many days before they could be able to apprehend those Chinese people. And when they finally did, the case went back and forth, back and forth. For, it dragged on for so many years. And according to people who live around that house, they said that this is not the first time that the dogs of that house have beaten their maid. That it has happened for three times already before this very one. That three other people went through the same ordeal. And when they were uh, eaten by the dogs, the Chinese couple paid them money. They, that the first one, they gave her about 3,000 Ghana CD or so. The second one, they, they gave her the same amount. The third one, who was a male kind of uh, said he would not take it and they had to increase it to about 5,000 Ghana cities. The, this very maid that was going through the same thing, they attempted giving her money, which re she refused that she wasn't going to take any money because everyone was talking about it. It was on the media and the whole Ghana was talking about it. We were all angry about it. They took those Chinese nationals, they let them out on bail. It dragged on for years and years and years. And finally, when the judgment came out, guess how much? 6,000 Ghana cities for both of them. 6,000 Ghana cities for both of them. According to the maid, it wasn't even, it couldn't even uh, cover half of the medical bills that she had to pay. She had to go through reconstructive surgery upon surgery upon surgery. And she still isn't fit. She still isn't fit. She has been disabled for life. She can't do anything anymore. And all she got for justice was 6,000 Ghana cities. End of story. Seriously. What are we doing? Can this happen in China? Can any African employ a Chinese in China and treat them like this and get away with it? Can it happen? And our leaders turn a blind eye to it. They act as though they don't know what is going on. 
They see it. They know it. If it's a member of your family, then all hell will break loose. But just because it's just one of us, yeah, it's okay. You don't want to ruin our relationship. Chinese people are ruining our lands here. They have depleted our lands in search for gold. And how did they come to get those lands? Our politicians gave it to them. They take mining concessions who belong to Ghanaian nationals and give it to Chinese. If you go down to the northern region where I come from, they have depleted our lands. Taking all the rosewood that we had, they have cleared everything. Who gave them the go ahead? Our traditional leaders. Why Africa? Why? Money isn't everything. There is dignity. It isn't everything. My goodness. Money isn't everything. It's time for us to wake up. Wake up, Africa. Claim your land. China doesn't need you. They need our land. They don't want you. They want your resources. They are giving you money left, right, center. And for what? They are not giving it to us for free. They want something in return. Something they are not telling us. Be suspicious. Be suspicious. Rise up. We can do things for ourselves. If we invest in Africa, Africa can take care of itself. We are strong enough to work for ourselves. We are intelligent enough to work for ourselves. Let's not do this to ourselves. We take contracts that belong to local nationals, contracts that could have been given to local nationals who have the same capabilities, and then we take it and give it to Chinese. Chinese to give us shoddy works. We import everything from China, even plastic and toothpick. We import from China. We can do it here. Let's believe in Africa. It's possible here in Africa. And our brothers who stole away, you don't need to go to any country to make it. It's hard, yes. It's tough, yes, it is. But if we persevere, we can make it happen. We can build Africa together. We can help ourselves. For those of us who already have, for those of us who are lucky enough to already be ahead, please pull the ones that are down there up. Let's help each other. We can make it happen. Thank you very much for watching. Wake up, Africa. Wake up. Thank you.